हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे थैंक यू सो मच फॉर सो नाइसली सिंगिंग दामोदर अष्टकम इट इज द होली मंथ ऑफ कार्तिक और दामोदर एंड सिंगिंग दामोदर अष्टकम ऑफरिंग लैम्प्स इज रिकमेंडेड इन ऑल द होली स्क्रिप्चर्स इट इज मेन्शन आउट ऑफ द ट्वेल्व मंथ्स द मंथ ऑफ कार्तिक इज वेरी वेरी स्पेशल and even little act of devotion done in this month a small thing offering a lamp is a very small thing in in our perspective right it takes 2 minutes 5 minutes probably but it has unlimited spiritual uh, result transcendental result so thank you so much for sharing this wonderful um bhajan and now we will discuss uh, bhagavad gita reading bhagavad gita is is the essence of our spiritual life and it is very very important especially in the month of kartik so we will chant some prayers and then we will start a uh, discussion further hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 ram hari ram ूतले स्वयंदी स्वदातिक वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्रीयुतापदकमल श्री गुरो वैष्णवाम सागर जाता सहगना रघुनाथा तम सजीव साइत सवदूत हरिजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पद सहगना ललिता श्री विशाखान्वता हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनीभ्यो वैष्णवभ्यो नमो नमः नमः पंकज नाभाय नमः पंकज मालिनी नमः पंकज नेत्राय नमस्ते पंकजांगे कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंद गोपकुमाय गोविंदय नमो नमा दामोदर पाद पंकज कौमी दामोदर पूजन सदा वदा दामोदर नाम निर्मल स्मरा दामोदर लीला सुंदर नमो विष्णुपय कृष्णा पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणी निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात देश तारिणी मुखम करोति वाचाल पंगुम लंगायते गिरि यत्पात वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारिण परमानंद माधव श्री चैतन्य ईश्वर जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Hare Krishna, dear worshipful devotees, thank you so much for taking out your valuable time on this Saturday morning. 
Thank you, Ramohan Prabhu, Manisha, Mataji, Karina, Mataji. Thank you so much for your association. So good to see you all. Avni, Vedahi, uh, Vishankar Prabhu, Sheetal Mataji, and Dr. Shardul Prabhu and family. Thank you, you all of you, for progressing together in the nice path of bhakti. Vipul Prabhu, Sudhir Prabhu, thank you so much. I know you have a lot of uh, services today, but still you take out your time. Thank you so much. Anita Mataji, Vinita Mataji, thank you for your time and your family as well. Puja Mataji and uh, Priyanka Mataji joining also. Kartik Prabhu, Nayan Prabhu, Bhaskuti Mataji from Tampa, thank you. And Gandhi Prabhu, you're always there uh, in all the classes, Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. And my dear uh, father, who gave me this body and recently got initiated by His Holiness Gopal Krishna Maharaj, His Grace Avadwasi Ram Prabhu. Thank you so much, Prabhuji, uh, my dear father, for giving your blessings and association. And uh, Rashmi Mataji joining all the way from Rochester, New York. Thank you so much. You're always eager to hear Bhagavad Gita and give your association. So thank you to all of you for your time your eagerness to read here Bhagavad Gita. Maline mochanam pumsam jalasnana dine dine sakrit gita amritasnanam samsara malanashanam As we take bath in the waters every day, we get purified from the dirt, from the impurities. But when we take bath in the waters of Nectarian waters of Bhagavad Gita, the song of the Lord, we are purified from the samsara malanashanam. We get a lot of mala in the outside world, lust, anger, greed, the three different modes bind us. We'll talk about those today. And then what's the remedy? What's the medicine? What's the vaccination to cure it? It is the message of Bhagavad Gita. So we'll study that. And... Uh, before we start, we'll just take a quick recap. Anyone remembers anything which we discussed last week, which was last Saturday? We discussed uh, some verses from chapter 7. We are at chapter 7 entitled Knowledge of the Absolute, which is the middle section of Bhagavad Gita, where we talk about uh, the essence of Bhagavad Gita. So anyone remembers, we'd cover till text number 10 last time. Anyone remembers? <laughs> Hare Krishna Parvaji, uh, I think we talked about uh, how to see God everywhere and Mataji and you were explaining all the energies that we see all around us, like the water and uh, all the like gross elements, which is water, earth, ether, fire and the air and uh, our subtle elements, all that. So... Nice. That's so Think, yeah, thinking about all that, like whenever we drink water, we just put our mind into the Krishna and say, okay, this is the taste of the water. So nice. how to basically be Krishna conscious Thank you. all Thank the you. time. Very nice. Yes, that's, that's spot on. So in the first three verses, which we discussed in the previous session, the acronym for this chapter is HEAD. So we can keep that in our heads. <laughs> that head is the acronym and the first three verses talk about the hearing process because the knowledge of the absolute cannot be attained without shravanam bhakti begins with shravanam hearing shrinvatam svakatha krishna punya shravana kirtana hridayantastha bhadrani vidhunoti suhritsatam nitya siddha it's Nitya Siddha Krishna Prima Sadhika Bunoi Shravanadi Shuddha Chitta Kari Yodoi. All the verses glorified about Shravanam. The basic, the first verse of Chitanesh Ishtashtikam also is about Shravanam. Um, uh, what's that? Verse? First verse? <laughs> no, Chet. Cheto Darpana Marjanam, Bhava Mahadava, Nirvapanam. When we hear the holy name, this, this is purified. Uh, our consciousness, which is covered with dirt, is purified. And then we are able to see Krishna everywhere. 
and that's the E for everywhere. Our bhakti will grow, it will, it will blossom like a bud, and then we'll be able to see in water. And we see someone's intelligent, we see, oh, Krishna is the intelligence of the intelligent. And uh, so with all that we were discussing, so we'll continue our discussion from where we left, and that was text number uh, 11. Sorry. Can I yes, please. Yeah. So last time you we were reading about uh, that sound is sound was the basis of the creation. So it's actually understanding sound is the basis of creation. Sound is also the cause of liberation. Therefore, we chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra and uh, you know call out to Krishna. So sound is uh, means to get liberated also. Wonderful. Shall I tell a story? Maybe I'll keep it till. Uh, the devotees start getting bored. <laughs> so right now everyone is fresh. So a little later. Okay, who wants to read this wonderful verse, text 11 of chapter 7? Karina wants to read. Go ahead. And you can keep your hand raised in electronic way so everyone will get a chance who, who has their hand raised. Yes, Karina, please read. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandavapmanam. Palam palavatam shaham kamaraga vivarjitam dharma viru dubhuteshu kamusmi baratar sabha. Translation by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vinanta Swami Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada ki jai. I am the strength of the strong, devoid the passion and the desire. I am, sex, uh, I am sex wife, which is not contrary to religious principles. O Lord of the Bharatas, Arjuna. Hare Krishna, Pauji, Dandavapanam. Hare Krishna, thank you so much, Karina, for reading this wonderful verse. So the E continues till text number two, how we can see Krishna everywhere. When we see something, someone powerful, the strength, Mr. World or this or that, they may have their body may be a little more powerful, but Krishna lifted the Govardhan Hill. He's, he doesn't have to go to gym to build muscles and then he starts to lift Govardhan Hill. He doesn't have to, even in the lap of his mother, he's the Supreme Personality of God. But in the material world, the world heavyweight champion will lift maybe 500 pounds, 700 pounds, I don't know what maximum they can lift. But they live for one with a lot of effort. Oh, in one second, and then boom, down, right? <laughs> and in that process, so many people end up breaking their bones. So many people end up going to the hospitals. So many people end up having shoulder problems, knee problems, back problems, this problem. Whole life is problem. <laughs> but Krishna, um, but nonetheless, we can appreciate that wherever they're getting the strength is from the supreme strength. And that is the supreme law. That, and the next point is also very important. The, the sex life, which is the union of the, the, the mother and the father, a, a couple who is married by the Vedic process, that is sanctioned. And the, that union for the offspring, for a Krishna conscious offspring, that is not contrary to religious principles. Hmm. So that is allowed permissible. Bhakti no Thakur, who was a Gryastha, had 10 children. Um, Dukara Maharaj, Dhruv Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj, Yudhishthir Maharaj, Arjuna, and so many great examples in our history. We see they were all Gryasthas. Yes, they were Brahmachari. Some of them were Brahmachari, which is also fine. So it's up to one's individual choice and based on the natures that after 25 years of age, approximately, one can make a choice that whether one wants to um, stay, continue in the Brahmachari ashram. But 99.9% .9 in our ISKCON society also, we see uh, our Grihasthas because this is uh, uh, more stable uh, or more apt for most people because we are not raised up in the Vedic Gurukul, etc. system. So, so Grihastha life, is we have to ensure that it does not become grihamedhi. Grihamedhi means one whose intelligence, mehda means intelligence, is only absorbed in I, me, mind. 
my home, my car, my family, my, my, I, me, mine. How can I enjoy more? How can I extract more from me and my family? Hmm. This is Griha Medi. But what is Grihastha Ashram? Ashram, Prabhupada mentions, Ashram is a place where spiritual culture is always foremost. I repeat, Ashram is a place where spiritual culture is always foremost. Each and every word is very important here. Ashram means where we have taken shelter of the Supreme Lord, the Amodara, of the Supreme Lord Krishna. That is ashram, whether it is Brahmachari ashram or Gryastha ashram or Vanaprastha ashram or Sanyas ashram. All the four ashrams have one thing in common and that is the shelter of the Lord. Otherwise, they are not called ashram. Just getting married to a boy or a girl does not make one Gryastha ashram. Taking shelter of the Supreme Lord, having a Krishna conscious family, prioritizing, keeping the Krishna conscious culture as always, not only on once a weekend, uh, not only once in a Janmashtami day in the year, not only once in a month, always foremost. Our day begins with Krishna consciousness, in the middle Krishna consciousness, and end, ends with Krishna consciousness. This is ashram. This is what the purpose of Grihastha life is. Prabhupada is also mentioning here a very nice point that when the poor put, the responsibility of parents is then to make their offsprings, children, Krishna conscious. That's a foremost responsibility. Giving food, water, shelter, birds also do that. Elephants also do that. Tigers also do that. All the 8.4 million species do that. But not everyone has the chance and the opportunity and the intelligence to make their offsprings Krishna conscious. So this is very, very important point. So if one is doing that, yes, one is permissible to have hundreds of children. Mm. Otherwise, these days, uh, things are very pathetic. Mm. Um, use of inappropriate methods. So many children are killed in the womb. And uh, free mixing of sexes before marriage. That is not dharma. Uh, it is not Aligned with dharma. Mm. Or having relationships outside marriage. That's also not aligned with dharma. That is not Krishna. Krishna is saying, I am the sex life which is not contrary to the religious principles. So having premarital relationships or outside marriage relationships is uh, not contrary. Uh, is contrary. So that is not Krishna. So, want to add a point or two? Yes, Shri Prabhupada explains there's a term here, Kama Raga Vivarjitam. Kam means lust, Raga means attachment, and Vivarjitam means de devoid of it, devo devoid of. So, you know, when we're Prabhupada first statement, Krishna is saying, Balam Balvatam Chaham, he is the strength of the strong. So, you know, where we've been reading different uh, attributes of, or vibhutis that people can have. Somebody can be very intelligent, somebody can be very pious or austere. And Krishna is saying, I am, I am the attribute in them. I'm those, you know, I'm, this, I'm the driving force behind them. So similarly, when, when, we, when we are thinking that, oh, I am the most intelligent or I am the most austere or I am the most uh, um, strong, then that's calm rag. That's calm rag. That means we, we are lusty for enjoyment, you know. We want to enjoy these attributes. And so we are saying, this is mine. Aham mamiti. This is mine. This is mine. This is mine. But Krishna is saying, kama raga vivarjitam. Those who do not have attachment to these lusty desires, I represent them. So we have to become kama raga vivarjitam. We have to understand that everything, uh, Krishna is the driving force behind us. So there's no cause of pride and there's no cause for envy. Uh, when somebody has those attributes. So that's what you know, we have to remember. Kama Raga Vivarjitam. That represents Krishna. And Krishna is saying, Dharma Viridhu Bhuteshu Kama Usmi Bhaya So when we are trying to, sex life is actually very sacred, but now in the media, in the in the society, it's, it, it's, it is given quite a lot of importance, but it's not in the purest sense. So 
So but Krishna is saying, but when that sex life is helping you know, Krishna to give life to another jiva, it's actually Krishna. But in that life also, even Prabhupada mentions in the fifth, text 15, purport also Prabhupada has mentioned, the responsibility of the guardians is to make children Krishna conscious. So that is the whole purpose of sex life. It is actually to help Krishna in procreation. Krishna is already given life. Krishna is already, material nature is already providing us bodies and different senses and all the needs that we may have. But when we are helping, we become part or we become instrument in Krishna's uh, arrangement and plan, then that is non-different from Krishna. And as Prabhuji mentioned, that a lot of people, even in the married life, uh, are not allowing um, you know, children to proliferate, life to proliferate. They use abnormal methods to kill the children. Or even Prabhupada was talking about, uh, you know, talking to a gynecologist in Malaysia and they would do abortions there for children. So he said that, you know, just imagine that if I and me are, if I and you are in this room and somebody sprays a gas which will suffocate us and we die, how pathetic is that? And that's what we do when, you know, when people are trying to abort children because they're not allowing the womb to have that healthy environment for life to proliferate. So uh, that is uh, what Prabhupada is mentioning that you know, we should not try to do all these things because that makes our heart very hard, very heart very hard. And uh, it's also against, you know, we're killing life. So we're not allowing life to proliferate. That is also against Krishna's plan. Krishna has put that life and we are trying not to not 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 to have it life in the future, so that is um, something which is contrary to religious mm -hmm. principles. Yeah, and it's very sad. Also, um, the statistics. Uh, maybe Natasha Mataji she can tell the statistics better. But there are millions of abortion dens every day, every year, uh, millions. So quite sad, sad statistic. And I also want to share one story which our neighbor told us. I, I don't watch news and all a lot. Maybe once in a while uh, it comes through someone. So, but this, I kind of explored on this. And I want to share this with everyone uh, because it gives, it's a, it has a lot of, it's a sad story again, but it's a true sad story. And it has a lot of lessons. And, and lot, I see a lot of young people also in the call. It's for everyone. These days, social media, Facebook and YouTube and uh, what else is there? Instagram, Twitter, whatnot. So many things are there to allure. And sometimes people may pose very rosy, cozy image of their themselves. But what is going inside is a lot of shallowness. And I want to share, do you know this? How many of you heard the story about this young couple in the US who you know, heard this? Anyone knows? from Northport, which is actually 20 minutes from here. So where, where we live. So I'm going to share in, in very high level. Uh, I don't know all the details, but the point is um, this uh, young couple, right? And there's the near names. They went for a month long or a few month long trip and to, to national park like a countryside i just want to share some picture that that how and each of them are like a public figure right the girl has over a million followers or sorry now say had because both of them are actually dead and i'll come to that point we we certainly you know, pray for their souls but but the point is that they have millions of followers. The girl had over a million followers on Instagram. And the boy has also half a million followers, almost 500,000 followers. Their YouTube videos have millions of views. So basically they're public. Figure. And wherever they were going, they were posting nice pictures. Oh, in this national park and that national park and this and that. Very rosy cozy image. So after one month, the boy came back to Northport. So they were living in Northport, which is 20 minutes from where I live. Um, so quite close from here. And the girl didn't come back. And 
there was a suspicion that what happened because they seemed to be going well uh, with each other. They were both in their 20s, early 20s, 22, 23 ish. And so the girl didn't come back, and the girl's family got concerned that something is not right. They haven't been got a chance to communicate with her. They haven't seen them together. Something does not look right. And they've informed the police, and it was in the media, everyone trying to search. This just happened just like a few weeks back. This is a very new thing. Um, and everyone is searching, searching. And finally, uh, they started to question the boy because he was the one you know, with her. And, uh, and they knew that they had, the family knew they had gone for a trip. They quit their jobs also. So police started to question. And the young boy also internally must be freaking out because one who follows a dharma, and when dharma is questioning, their heart will shatter in the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita, right? So basically the police trying to represent the dharma, trying to question. So his heart must be inside like shattering. And, uh, and then the police found the remains of the girl in one of the national parks. And by the time, I don't know what happened before uh, because I didn't read in great detail at the start, high level, the boy had also committed suicide because he knew what was about to come. So, my dear friends, it's a very sad story. I don't want to, you know, but the lesson is important. We should not go in artificial real life so much that we forget the real life. The real life, the real substance is Bhagavad Gita. Artificial, so many even in recent years. Hollywood, Bollywood, Instagram stars, YouTube stars, they may protect. Uh, pretend an image of themselves that everything is very rosy cozy but inside shallowness so the boy had killed the girl and then he knew what was coming so before you know all that goes to jail or whatever he committed suicide it's a very sad story if we follow Bhagavad Gita we can be we can be away from all this stuff and a lot of you are in the young age or will be passing through that phase. Things will appear very rosy cozy, but we have to understand what is the real sum and substance of life, and that is the Shastras. If we follow Guru Sadhu Shastra, we'll never be in the wrong path. If we follow the artificial so-called stars of Facebook and YouTube and whatnot, then we will be shallow, our life will be shallow. So let's continue to pray for them because we certainly are, you know, Understand it's a big loss to the family and, and uh, young people in their 22, 23 years, a big loss. But let's learn the lessons also and let's not, uh, let's have the, our compass in life, our direction in life very clear. So we'll move on to the next verse, which is text 12. Yes, Anita Mataji, you want to read? Hare Krishna. Ye chaiva sakti kabhava raja sastama sashaye mata eveti tanvidhi naka aham tesu temai. Translation Know that all states of being, be they of goodness, passion, or ignorance, are manifested by my energy. I am in one sense everything, but I am independent. I am not under the modes of material nature, for they, on contrary, or without me, Hare Krishna, or within me, Hare Krishna. Go ahead. Okay, so, uh, so here Krishna is saying that I am manifesting these modes of nature, different modes of nature. So you have to understand that Krishna is not under these grips of these modes of nature. He is above these modes of nature. So here Prabhupada is writing in the purport, for instance, under the state laws, one may be punished, but the king, the lawmaker, is not subject to that law. So even though sometimes it appears that Krishna is also under rajas, tamas, sattva, goodness, passion, ignorance, but he's not, you know. So Prabhupada gives this example. We say God is absolute. So God's front side and back side, everything is good. There's nothing um, uh, different about it. 
you know, it's not that backside is less, in, uh, it's inferior, or front side is superior, or leg is inferior, or face is superior, nothing like that. It's all absolute. And in the spiritual world, as you will be reading in the in later verses, there'll be a word towards the end of the chapter, there's a word called dwandva. Dwandva means dualities. So this world is characterized of dualities, good, bad, honor, dishonor, pleasure, pain, uh, cold, heat, but spiritual world is absolute. So whatever Krishna does is at is an absolute level. So even if he lies, you know, uh, I didn't steal the butter, but he's doing it for the, increasing the intensity of love of the devotees. He's not under tamas. He's not under, you know, in the modes of nature that he's lying. So everything that happens in the spiritual world is actually to increase the pleasure of Krishna or to increase the intensity of the devotees of both. So that is the ultimate purpose. So there Prabhupada gives the example that Yudhishthira Maharaj in the war of Mahabharata was asked to lie with Krishna. He, he, was, he was supposed to say in, in, in his, um, under his, um, to Dronacharya that Ashwatthama is dead, but he was, he was supposed to talk about the Ashwatthama, the elephant, not Ashwatthama, the son of Dronacharya. So when Yudhishthira Maharaj is Dharmaraj, he's, he's, the, he's the truth personified, honesty personified. So when Krishna asked this, he was not uh, willing to do that. He was hesitant to do that. And because he was hesitant, he didn't follow what Krishna is asking him to follow. And uh, his chariot actually touched the earth because he didn't follow Krishna, even though it was a lie. Or it was actually he was supposed to say under his breath, Ashwatthama, the elephant is dead. So like that, he was supposed to say like that. But so Krishna was directing him to, you know, uh, do that. And it was uh, not very, uh, the Yudhishthira Mara found it very hard to comprehend why Krishna is doing that. The Prabhupada is saying, whatever Krishna does, Krishna can adjust all the opposing elements. He knows how to adjust the situations perfectly. But in ordinary dealings, we must discriminate good or bad, truth or, you know, lie. So we should try to do this. This is, religious or irreligious but when it is in relation to krishna all these opposing elements become adjusted so whatever krishna is asking us to do it's dharma and whatever we do which is krishna is not asking us to do is a dharma so like that if in our sense krishna will not come you do this or you do that what senior devotees are saying what the learned sages are saying is dharma and what they're saying you should not do is a dharma Mm-hmm. Thank you. Very nice. And then Prabhupada is uh, elaborating in a word here called Nirguna. Nirguna does not mean he does not have any quality. Some people say, oh, they see Krishna is told Nirguna in the Upanishads and this and that. So Nirguna does not mean <coughs> he does not have any quality. It means he does not have any material qualities. When he dances with the gopis, that's also transcendental. When he steals the butter, he's chow, chow rashtikam bhajan we're singing this morning. He is, it is transcendental. When he's crying, it is transcendental. When he's angry, it is transcendental. When he breaks the butter pot, it is transcendental. When he runs away from the battlefield, it is transcendental. When he's fighting with the demons, it is transcendental. Generally, all these modes or acts are covered with different modes some in the goodness, passion, ignorance. We are all have this, this different uh, layers or different uh, modes. But, but Krishna is, is um, transcendental of all these modes. So therefore, he is called Nirguna. Or he is not affected by these modes. Rather, he is the controller of all these modes. So... 13 also is very important in this connection. Mm. So, uh, you know, Shastra say uh, Lord is Nirgun, but also we see that Shastra also explains 64 qualities of Krishna. So, you know, it's it's uh, contrary. That's why we have to understand Nirgun means actually no material qualities, but he has spiritual qualities. Yes. Anyone has any other comments, additions, or questions so far? We have covered two, three verses. Or any point we covered, which is not so clear. Hi, Hi Krishna Prabhuji. Um, can I, uh, may I uh, add yeah. something? Yes, um, please. 
very nice uh, discussion, Mataji and Prabhuji, as always. Uh, Prabhuji, um, I heard from uh, Bhukti Rashamrita Shami Maharaj's uh, lecture and also Prangovinda Prabhuji recently said about um, the calm. So which we're discussing is not uh, only the sexual desire, which is called calm, but it's anything if um, you know, someone enjoys a nice house without Krishna, that is also called calm. Calm means anything which is um, um, uh, not related to Krishna, but uh, people who want to enjoy. So that's just would like to add from you, Hare Krishna. Thank you. That's such an excellent point here added and so after in this discussion. Atmindriya priti vancha tare bolikam. Atmindri. Anything, as Mataji said, anything for one's own sense pleasures. So me, I, me, my, or extended selfishness. My family only, my community only, etc. Krishna priti acha dhare premana. When the act is to please Krishna, that is called love. From lust to love. And actually, His Holiness Bhakti Maharaj was also making a very nice point here. Some people, maybe let's discuss that after uh, we read text 13. So we'll, we'll discuss that after 13. Yes, Sampada, Mataji, you want to read? Yes, Babuji, Hare Krishna, text 13. Shibir kuna mayar bhavir e bhisarvam idam jagat ohitam nabi janati name pyam param avyayam. Translation by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Samshila Prabhupada. Deleted by the three modes, goodness, passion, and ignorance, the whole world does not know me, who am above the modes of modes and in, a, in and inexhaustible. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, back to you. Hare Krishna, thank you so much. This verse is nicely explained. 12 and 13, uh, the slide kind of explains this, that there are, and Prabhupada elaborates, that there are different classes of people. Guna, Karma, Vibhagasha, the Brahmanas, the Kshatriyas, the Vaishyas, and the Shudras. So Brahmanas are primarily in the mode of goodness, and the Kshatriyas in primarily in the mode of passion, and Vaishyas in the passion and uh, ignorance, and the Shudras in primarily in the mode of ignorance. Uh, so it's not that uh, someone is better or one we should. The point is everyone should be treated with respect. We have already discussed that um, Pandita Samadarshina. In, in every organization also, there are different flavors of people. Uh, so this picture is very appropriate here. These represents the, the Shakti of the Lord. The different modes are controlling us. You see, like a puppet, puppet show. How many of you have seen puppet show in your life? You've seen at some point, right? So the puppeteer may not be seen, correct? The strings are also not seen. The ropes are invisible or, or they are like blended with the color of the background. So it's not seen, but the puppeteer is controlling the puppet. So we are also puppets. In whose hand? In the hands of Shakti of the Lord. Sometimes the mode of goodness is prominent. Sometimes the mode of passion is prominent. Sometimes the mode of ignorance is prominent. So all the jivas are pretty much in the combination of different modes. And a good example to understand is through these colors. All the colors are made by the three primary colors or base colors, red, yellow, and blue. And their combinations in different degrees lead to hundreds and thousands of colors. Does everyone agree to that? So if we mix like 10% yellow and 25% and red and rest is uh, blue, it will be a different color. If you add 2% more yellow, it will be a different color. If you subtract or we can we add 5% more red, it will be a different color. So no one is primarily in one mode. You cannot see even the demigods. They are primarily in one mode, but they also have combination of passion. You see sometimes Indra, does activity which are in the mode of passion or ignorance. The demons are more in the mode of passion and ignorance and less of goodness, right? And then we will study later uh, in the following chapters how pretty much everything is divided into different modes, not just people. 
The time of the day is divided in different modes. Morning time of goodness, the Brahmurta is pure goodness, the Brahma Mahurta. Then the passion begins, everyone running, work, work, work. And the night time, lazy, relax, chill out, watch TV, waste time, and then rest. And similarly, the foods are divided into different modes. The people's uh, habits are divided into different modes. The kind of food we eat, the kind of thought we pr process, the kind of people we associate with, the kind of environment we live in. Some people like to live in a messy, cluttered place because ignorance is prominent. Some people like to live in a very clean place it's because goodness is dominant. Right? So pretty much everything is... is uh, but Krishna, in this picture, if you go back again, Krishna is above these three modes. He is the controller of all the demigods. All the Indra, Chandra, Varuna, and we'll study in the next verse also uh, that uh, the Maya Shakti is, is not uh, superior to the Lord. Rather, it's the, the Shakti of the Lord. The Shakti Man. Shakti comes from Shakti Man. The Shakti Man is higher than the Shakti. So, okay, very important verse and it's a memory verse also. 7.14. Uh, let's study that. Ravi, uh, come. Hey Krishna Prabhuji, Devi hi esha gunamai, mama maya duratyaya, mama eva ye prapadiyante, mayam etam tarantite. Translation This divine energy of mine, consisting of the three modes of material nature, is difficult to overcome, but those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. Hare Krishna, back to you, Prabhuji. Thank you so much. Um, this is a very often quoted verse, one of Prabhupada's uh, important verses. This is in the top 50 verses as well. As we were referring to this slide here, that my energy, Mama Maya, Mama Maya Duratya, it's very difficult to overcome. Because sometimes a person may not even feel that I am, you know, very few people, does anyone feel that one is bound? Anyone in the material world feels that one is bound? Very few people will be honest and say, things are actually not working. I'm not the controller. People say, no, I can buy anything. I, I have money. I, have, I can go to any place. I can eat whatever I like. I can, I can do whatever I like. I'm not bound. Why are you saying I'm bound? Right? So very few people even realize that. It is, therefore, it is so strong. The chains are invisible. When the chains are invisible, it's even hard to overcome that. We are in this jail where the chains are invisible. Someone may have the chains of iron. Someone may have the chains of silver, more wealth. Someone may have the chains of gold, more wealth. But everyone is bound. Everyone is in the grips uh, of the energy of the Lord. And... Uh, this divine energy is very difficult to overcome because after millions and millions of lifetimes we have been we have been moving on in the cycle of birth and death. In the cycle of birth and death, just moving on like a puppeteer, uh, like a puppet being, uh, you know, being <laughs> you're made to dance by this Maya energy. The mode of goodness string is pulled. Oh, let's go to temple. Oh, nice day. Let's go to temple. Mode of ignorance string is pulled, then just forget about it. Just take it easy, go to bar, watch strong things and stuff. Go to fashion. Oh, let's do something. Let's do something. Right? Just do it. Forget about what we have to do. Just do it. Hmm? Eat, live life king size, eat, sleep, um, uh, worry, don't worry about tomorrow. Enjoy. So we, all these are, are, are strings pulled by. Now, one who takes shelter of the Supreme Lord will not have to uh, suffer under the grips of Maya. Because Krishna says, yes, it is difficult. Indeed, it is very difficult. But one who takes my shelter, it's now very easy. Because Krishna is the source of all energy, the source of all strengths. Imagine 
it's like a match of kabaddi tug of war or or any like you know we are two teams or tug of war let's say so one side are we and the other side is maya okay and we are trying to overcome the maya energy we're trying to overcome the maya energy maya is very strong krishna's energy and we are infinite similar we cannot overcome can anyone overcome the durga the maya krishna's energy but when we offer when we when we take shelter ma may be a prapadyan but those who take shelter of me then krishna comes and stand right behind us and then we can easily overcome his holiness sachin and maharaj gives an example one time he went to his friend um and who had a big bulldog and the bulldog started shouting wow 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 like loudly and they are like scary right and then he was scared right because they can certainly harm and probably kill also here like big big dog and then when the master told okay dog relax take it easy is my friend then the bulldog does not harm <laughs> right so similarly there is a very nice verse in shri chaitanya charitamrit uh, which we will study um here Hmm. Yeah. Anyone wants to read this one? There's no good chance yet. Anita, Mataji, you want to read? Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Krishna Surya Sama Maya Haya Andhar Andhakara Yaha Krishna Taha Nahi Maya Ra Adhikara. Krishna is compared to sunshine, and Maya is compared to darkness. wherever there is sunshine there cannot be darkness as soon as one takes to krishna consciousness the darkness of illusion the influence of the external energy will immediately vanish hari krishna hari krishna thank you so much this is such a wonderful verse and one more verse we'll read from here please raise your hands those who are interested to read so i can go in a flow yes sudhir prabhu हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी दंडत नमस्तुष्ट्रांसलेशन बेस्ट बेसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्री प्रपा श्री प्रपा की जय the external illusion energy of krishna known as maya is always ashamed to stand in front of krishna just as darkness is ashamed to remain before the sunshine however that maya bewilders unfortunate people who have no intelligence thus they simply boast that this material world is theirs and they that they are its enjoyers thank you prabhu back to hari krishna hari krishna so appropriate verses in this connection where there is krishna there cannot be maya where there is sun there cannot be a uh, darkness the when we turn our face away from the sun or light then we see the shadow or darkness so krishna bhuli se jeev anadir bahir mukh ate maya tare de samsar do when jiva forgets krishna maya gives dukha when jiva remembers krishna maya is gone one establish krishna connection or krishna consciousness and that's why we are here to in this international society for krishna consciousness to be free from all suffering and as rahupad said then the jiva comes in the strings of krishna because maya is gone illusion is gone darkness is gone now whatever is orchestrated in the life of that devotee who has taken shelter of the supreme lord is orchestrated by by any krishna right because maya is gone the jiva has said krishna i take shelter of you now nachao 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 simate mr prabhupad said i am like a puppet 
you make me dance the way you went and sometimes even a uh, so called suffering may come why this accident happened why this disease happened why this death happened why this happened if for a devotee repeat for a devotee it's personally orchestrated by the supreme lord not by the maya and we recently had a very nice lecture by his grace baladev balram shakti balram prabhu who explained this point in great detail so want to add a few points so um first thing to remember is i think i asked one of the devotees when i was just beginner in krishna consciousness and still like like 10 years back i asked <laughs> that uh, uh, you know why uh, maya is like so strong uh, you know when krishna is so strong the why why maya is so strong so she said because maya is krishna's energy it is very strong but when we take the shelter of the supreme energetic then maya will not have power and we read a few verses with respect to that it's also important to understand uh, how maya works so here we are reading about three gunas prabhupada is writing in the purport guna is actually like a rope so uh, as a conditioned soul we are bound by these ropes so prabhupada explains that there are two ways maya works one is uh, prakshep patmika and and the other is avarat avarat natmika ways of working so in one in uh, in avaratmika we feel that there's no suffering we are just okay we are doing okay and in prakshapatmika we think that yeah there is some suffering but uh, no no worries i am i am being okay so we recognize to some degree and then we do it like i am okay you know it is very interesting people ask how are you and everyone <laughs> says i am okay <laughs> i am being fine i am being good because that's the uh, most common answer people give even though inside there will be some problems in the house there is some problem health may be in some problem i'm being okay but this is wrong i'm doing okay but you know i'm not being good at all is so something is is so people usually say i'm doing okay so that's the covering of the maya where we feel that we are doing okay you know but we are actually suffering in one way, one way or the other so it's very important in bible there's a story of a prodigal son that means it means that there was a son he had a very rich father very in the village in the countryside and he said that no uh, he had four brothers or something like that and he said no i want one of the sons said i'm i'm going by myself i'm going to the city to earn money and i can do you know things my way so i'm leaving you and he left his father and he went to the city and he was earning 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 a lot of uh, he was trying to earn but he couldn't sustain and he was trying very hard but still he couldn't sustain so then he finally realized that he has to go back to his father and he returns to his father and father is standing with arms open trying to welcome him back to home so this is the prodigal son who left the father and he came back realizing that you know i should stay in the shelter of my father and so we are the all the prodigal sons of krishna uh, we we rebelled against krishna and we came here and now we have to go back and realizing that we are trying to sustain you know there is a word karshati in 15th chapter struggle for existence we are struggling for one or the other thing so we realize this struggle and then we realize that we actually belong to the supreme father that is how the purport of of the tenth chapter of text 15 begins the prabhat is saying that we are actually belonging to the supreme rich father and so the intelligence is that we surrender to that supreme father we we don't have to beg on the road you know when we have a rich father so that's not intelligence so uh, we go back to this uh, to to our father Uh, with full surrender so there is another verse in chaitanya charitamrita madhya 22 39 krishna tumara hana yadi bole ek baar maya banda hai te krishna tare kare paar so all we have to do is tell krishna just once oh krishna i belong to you and at that very moment the maya's grip will loosen and krishna will uh, rescue us and uh, deliver us from this material existence thank you nice. all these verses from internet shaita i'm referring to to 31 to 39 are very relevant in this connection sakra deva prapannaya even once one tells thou asmi i am yours from ramayana 
Lord Ram says, even once if someone tells, Abhayam Sarvada Tasmai Dadami Etan Is there any more straight translation for this? Little problem, I want to read this one. Oh, we got set. Hare Krishna, is that uh, audible? Yes, Prabhuji, it's audible. You can someone read the translation. Little problem, I want to read. Shri Prabhuji, Hare Krishna, do you read the number one? All the best, Shri Prabhuji. It is my vow that if one only once seriously surrenders unto me, saying, My dear Lord, from this day I am yours, and praise to me for courage, I shall immediately award courage to that person, and he will always remain safe from that time on. Back to Bhujya Wow, isn't that so hope giving? All we have to do every day is tell Krishna, Damodar, I am yours. From our heart, Krishna, Chinmaya Bhaskara Tumi, Kirani Rakarana Ami, Prabhu Tumi, Ami Nitya Das, I am your eternal servant, Krishna, please accept me. That's it. At least we say it theoretically, and then we start internalizing that, and then we start speaking it from the heart. Mm. Then there's no worry, no hurry. Everything will then. Our Supreme Father, our most beloved, is arranging everything, then there's no question of fear, insecurity. What will happen if this happens? What will happen if that happens? Well, everything. He's a supreme controller of all controllers. He'll arrange what's best. That's it. Easier said than done, but we have to continue to, to say that. So we'll do 15th words now. Yes. Chitra Mataji, you want to read? Hare Krishna. Namam Duskriti no mudhaha Prabhupadyante Naratama Maya Yapa Hritagyana Asuram Bhavam Ashritaha. Those miscreants who are grossly foolish, who are lowest among mankind, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion, and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons do not surrender unto me. Hare Bull. Thank, Thank you so much. much. So, um, so yeah, the word is Dushkritina. Dushkritina means one who is always acting against the, the scriptures, the miscreants. And so there are four types of miscreants. So as we were discussing, when Prabhupada is writing in the beginning, and he says in the lecture also, that we belong to a very rich father. Then why are we not surrendering to him? And who are those personalities who are not surrendering to, surrendering to the Supreme Lord? So then this discussion starts. Okay, these are the four people who do not surrender to Krishna. And then we'll be reading the four people who surrender to Krishna. So here, grossly, uh, so Dushkritina means miscreants. So who are the four miscreants? First is they're grossly foolish. So they're foolish. Uh, so Prabhupada is writing in the purport that they are the people who are working very hard day and night, spending sleepless nights, having ulcers and indigestion, but they're still working. And for what? For temporary gains. The material gains are flickering, they will go away. If not in this lifetime, then at the end of this lifetime. And even then, the enjoyment, as we understand in the material world, is very small. You labor so much, but the enjoyment is very less. There'll always be some or the other uh, problem. So, therefore, uh, it is... And they're also very, very, very reluctant to part with their, with their earnings. Uh, for the pleasure of the Supreme Law. They don't want to give charity. They don't want to do anything for the Supreme Law. They just want to work for themselves. So the hard workers. So Prabhupada is also giving an example of ass. The donkey is always working hard, do not know for what, for whom. So Prabhupada is writing, very heavy purport. So Prabhupada is writing illusory masters. They're working for illusory masters. So they're temporary masters in this particular lifetime, in this particular circumstance. They're working very hard for that. So they are foolish. They don't want to 
uh, work. Prabhupada is writing in the purpose, the swine who eat the night soil, the swine, the pig or the hog, who eat the night soil, the stool, do not care to accept sweet, meat, sweet meats made of sugar and ghee. Similarly, the foolish worker will untiringly continue to hear of the sense and joy, uh, sense and enjoyment tidings of the flickering material world, but will have a very little time to hear about the eternal living force that is moving the material world. So they're entangled with the material world without acknowledging the master of the material world. So those are the foolish people. The next category of Dushkritana is Naradhima. Nar means man or human being, and then Adhima means oh, fallen or the lowest. So there are so many uh, proverbs writing there approximately 8,400,000 species of living beings, and of that, 400,000 are human species. Among that human species, there's a, there's a, there's a particular uh, description in um, teachings of Lord Chaitanya, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, and uh, I think the devotees have made a nice pie chart. If we ever find it, we'll share. But there's like a full pie chart of all the living entities, it shows that so many living entities are actually, um, you know, in, in tree body, then in the aquatics, then the land animals, and very only one percent is actually human beings. Among that one percent of human beings, uh, only few are interested in some religious activity, and of that, some are actually engaged in demigod worship. Some are actually engaged in god worship because they want something in return. And only very few 0.001% are actually real devotees who really want to you know, understand the Supreme Personality of God as it is. So very small. So these Naradmas, Prabhupada gives the definition. Who is a Naradma? A one, a person who is awarded this human form of life is not using that particular human form of life for higher inquiries, for understanding the Supreme Lord. That is a Naradma. So these may be socially or politically developed, but have no religious principle. And even though religious principles are there, so-called religious principles, religion without God is no religion. Because ultimately the religion, purpose of religion is actually to know the supreme truth and man's relationship with him. Whoever loses this chance you know, to understand the supreme Lord in this human form of life is anaradhan. You know, so Prabhupada is writing, as we were discussing with the 11th text, that when, a, when the child is in the womb, he's praying very hard. This is a very uncomfortable position. As soon as I get out, I will serve the Supreme Lord. But as soon as he comes, he forgets. You know, you see the, the covering influence of the Maya energy in text 14 and the throwing influence of the Maya energy. Throwing is that there's some problem, but it's okay, I'm good. So... But it is the duty of the guardians of children to revive the divine consciousness dormant in that. And so therefore, 99.9% of the population is Naradhana. They're not trying to inquire about the Supreme Lord. And then Prabhupada gives the example of Jagai and Madai who were delivered. They're the Supreme Naradhanas, but they were delivered by the mercy of the devotees. So Prabhupada is writing, so the Naradma is condemned by the Supreme Personality of Godhead can again revive his spiritual consciousness only by the mercy of the devotee. So we are supposed to give Krishna consciousness to each and every one and try to deliver them and make them qualified to worship the Supreme Lord. The third category is Maya Aprita Jnana. So it means that Aprita means to plunder or to kidnap or um, to steal. So Jnana, Jnana means knowledge. So one whose knowledge is stolen by Maya or the illusory energy, maya, aprita, jnana. So these are the actually very learned people, supposedly learned people, scientists, politicians, uh, literaries, philosophers, great learned people. And what are they trying to do? They are trying to utilize their intelligence or their knowledge to, uh, to improve the sense gratification. So they are they are having these motor cars, in the, the internet or uh, laptops, high quality laptops, but for what? They're having nice houses, nice bridges, what for what? They're trying for sense gratification. 
So these days we see people have the tendency to decorate their restrooms. They put little plants over the commode, little candles and little, uh, little flowers or whatever decorations they want to do. But restroom is a restroom. The business of the restroom is that we do our business there and then come out. That's the purpose of the restroom. There's no other purpose. So similarly, the material world is like a dirty restroom and we are trying to decorate it with all these opulences that the scientists are providing. We're trying to make it better, but it's not. It's not going to get better. And um, Krishna is saying that this is the Kalama Shashwatam, Anitya Masukam. This is not a place for, uh, you know, for finding happiness. It's flickering. And so we are trying to decorate our, you know, uh, toilets. Uh, so the devotees compare this example that we are trying to decorate the material world, but it is still a very uncomfortable place to be in. And uh, so these uh, Maya Prita Gana are trying to do this. So they're not utilizing the intelligence to serve the Supreme Lord and to inquire about the human form of life, but they are trying to uh, they're trying to utilize their knowledge and intelligence for betterment of the material situation. So their knowledge is actually stolen by the Supreme Lord. The last category is actually openly atheistic. They decry the existence of the Supreme Lord. Or they think that, oh, Lord is subservient to, uh, to the being personal feature. Or how can God come to this planet Earth? He cannot descend. He doesn't exist. So they are, these are openly atheistic. But material energy is so powerful that it can resist the unauthorized plans. This is from the purpose. Unauthorized plans, the atheists, and baffle the knowledge of planning commissions. So people make a lot of arrangements. You know, the people have these uh, hurricane tracking centers and they track, oh, the hurricane is coming, but what are they doing about the hurricane? Can they stop hurricane? They're helpless in front of the material energy. So we may have certain plans, but material energy knows how to thwart it, how to completely nullify it. So the atheistic plan maker is sometimes very intelligent and meritorious also. Because any gigantic plan, good or bad, must take intelligence to execute. But because the atheist brain is improperly utilized in uh, utilizing opposing the plan of the Supreme Lord, the atheistic plan maker is called Dushkriti. Dushkriti. This is in the beginning of the purpose. So uh, you know, you see that we need intelligence, either good or bad. But because it's against the plan of the Lord, Material energy will thwart it time and again. So these are the four people who do not surrender unto the Supreme Lord. Thank you. I know it's uh, very long for put one of the longest purports, or four or five pages are there. If you so you can read it uh, at your convenience, there are at least five pages. So all these four classes are, are shared in great detail. So, is everyone okay? Puji, um, Mataji, I have a question that in class two, they don't follow any religious principles. So that means they're atheist. I'm, I'm just speculating. You can hear me. And number four also, they are atheist. They are doing principles. How do you differentiate these two classes? The Naradhama is the second class. And the last one is uh, Asuram Bhavama Shrutam, the demonic principles. Basically, Naradhama is like too dull to inquire about life. They're too dull. And atheistic people are saying there's no God. And this is sometimes even like, even technically there are Naradhamas, there are tribal people who are very ignorant, you know, in, even in human form of life. There are certain pockets in the world where there are tribal people living and they're, they're called Naradhamas, even technical terms, because they're too dull to inquire about life. They're too, they, live, they live in a very pathetic conditions, the very pathetic way of eating, you know, they eat maybe their own grandkids or something like that with dead bodies or things like that or their grandparents I don't know but um, they are like 
too dull to inquire about life and these are like they think they are the enjoyer they are the supreme you know but Prabhupada is saying that in one sense everyone is a Naradhana he's categorized 99.9 percent of Naradhanas that means they are not inquiring even though they have the intelligence to inquire and there are certain people who are too dull to inquire about life mm -hmm. yes as Bhakti Rasamad Maharaj was mentioning that even today I guess uh, in the class four there are people who openly say that Krishna never descended to this material world, to this, this world. Or some say, there, is, there are groups and sects of people who say, Krishna is in right now suffering in the hellish planets because of all the activities he, done, he did. <laughs> so, you know, they can concoct whatever they want. And openly they will say that. They will distribute flyers to others about it. And I have seen that actually outside the temple because they know that the faithful people are coming. Outside the people, they will distribute flyers about against God. So openly atheistic, using this so called intelligence um, to openly blaspheme God or devotees, etc. Asuram Bhav, Asura, like. Totally opposed to Sura, like demons, demoniac, causing harm to others, openly, um, you know, basically on the name of and, and things like happening these days. You can certainly relate in this category, openly, atheistic or fanatic, um, the demoniac principle. They've taken this Asuripa, Ashrita, they have taken envious of the Supreme Law. They cannot see, oh, why are these devotees openly chanting in the street, dancing? Why they look so happy? Let's do something to harm them. Hiranyakashipu right? like mentality. Asura. Trying to stop the religious activities. Openly. The three is like more like indirect way of getting away from God. No, no, I am God. I'll make. Let's play God. Right? <laughs> they believe in God, but they want to kind of get away from it. And so, so there is certainly some overlap in here and there, but yeah, Papa is nicely clarifying here. Does that help? Greatly. Thank you. I have one more question. Is it okay to do now? Yeah, yeah. Why not? Oh, okay. so, so these, these three modes of Maya. Um, so how this starts? Like when we are born, a baby. So he is born with the mixture of three gunas from the previous birth and when he grows with the nature and the and with the society then it more uh, the mixture goes to different way or we are born without any guna and then it comes with our karma it's a complex combination of everything <laughs> As we know, the subtle body is always there until the, the jiva goes back home, back to the spiritual world. The subtle body will keep moving from one life to the other. So subtle body carries the desires. If someone is wanting to enjoy like uh, something and they could not fulfill their desires or the desires were still there, the next body they'll get equivalent. And of course, you know, the next body they will get is based on the past karma. And also, whatever cultivation is there. So now, if say, if everything is past karma, then why should I try, even try my child to be in a good consciousness? So everything is not past karma, right? Why should I even worry about if my child or my wife or my husband or my parents be Krishna conscious? Whatever is destined will happen only. I, I am not the controller. Yes, we are not the controller. But we have to try the, the, to make the odds in favor of that situation or against that situation. Now, someone is born in a family of Naradhama. Someone is born in a devotee family. Someone is born in a wealthy family, in a poor family, in India, or US, or wherever. Because certainly because of past factors. Now, in that family also, there will be choices. right? Choices by the parents. Hmm? Choices by the environment, and sometimes choices by the many times choices by the individual. Like, like I can give example of Lakshya Prabhu, right? He had the choice. Like all of you had the choice today to come for the class or not come for the class, right? 
But the choices we are making now, we are building our future. Same for everything. After till we can say till five, seven years, the choices are no, not there, right? Whatever the parent, if the parents will give him beef, they will eat beef. If the parent will give him Krishna Prasad, they will eat Krishna Prasad. Till five, seven years, there is not much choice. But after that age, the intelligence starts to develop. The reasoning starts to develop. Sometimes even there are small videos there of kids. They say, oh, this, this uh, product which you are feeding me is made by killing this thing. I don't want to eat it, right? There are very nice videos in that. And then the small five, seven-year-old tells their parent, I don't want to eat this, right? So it's a choice. Uh, so it's a complex factor of both uh, the past, the present, the choices, the association also. Um, oh, you want to add? Yeah, Yamuna, Balram Shakti Prabhu is giving the example of Yamuna Mataji. And you all know Yamuna Mataji is a very exalted disciple of Sri Prabhupada. Prabhupada even said she's at the penultimate stage of uh, prema or love of God, the stage of bhava. So uh, she was actually born to a fisherman and she made a choice to become a devotee and not only just a devotee, but she became a really pure devotee. She was very dear to Prabhupada. So he was giving this example. I think he gave another example that I don't recall at the moment, but, uh, but uh, everybody has, uh, we have to make choices even though we are born with certain gunas and, and we understand that we have this problem and then we can pray to Krishna accordingly that, oh, this uh, mode of passion and ignorance is prominent in me and so please help me, Krishna. And that surrender will help and we will read in chapter 14, uh, which is entitled Three Modes of Material Nature and Krishna is saying that ultimately it's by, he tells Arjuna, Arjuna asks because how do we get out of these modes of material nature? And Krishna says that it's through devotional service. Brahma, uh, of course. Mm. Brahma, well, we are yeah. So, yes, and, and that's what we are here for. Someone asked Gorang Prabhu, can destiny be changed? He said, yes, that's why we are here. <laughs> To change our destiny, right? It's, it's not, we cannot say, oh, he's destined to be a devotee or she's not destined to be a devotee. You are here, whatever. We read this bhajan today. Uh, that um, all the, uh, the past sins which we may have committed for millions of lifetimes can be destroyed. Hmm? By when Krishna is the expert stealer, he will steal all that. Provided we take shelter of him. Provided Devi Isha Gunamai Mamaya Prapad. Mamaya Dratya Mamaya Prapad. So if we do our part, Krishna is promising he'll do his part. Mamchayo Bichare Nabham Bhakti Yogena Sevate Sagunan Samati Tyaitan Brahma Bhuyaya Kalpati. One who does a Vyavichari Bhakti, that means unalloyed Bhakti, engages fully in Bhakti, then one can transcend. It's one of the questions actually in the Bhagavad Gita uh, quiz, uh, the 50 verse quiz, right? For those who passed, if you remember. So this is one of the questions, 1426, that how can we overcome the three modes? Krishna is saying by unalloyed Bhakti, we can overcome. Yes, it is difficult based on how deeply one is entangled. Based on how, like, for someone, 90 percent bhakti may be, he or she may have done in the past life. So for them, it will be easy to overcome. For some, it, it could be starting from 10 percent. Everyone present here has certainly performed some percentage. What that percentage is, we don't know. Krishna knows that. But uh, based on one's seriousness, sincerity, one can certainly accomplish the goal of life. And that is unalloyed bhakti. So, does that make sense? Or that is is. So, there is guna per net life. And then from there we get remodeled with the association. Yes, the subtle body, that is the intelligence and the memory also. In some cases, there are a lot of stories they recall their last lives. And of course, the desires, all this is a product of gunas only. Very nice discussion. Thank you, Prabhu, for your question.
So we'll quickly summarize, it's, it's, it's almost time. So we talk about uh, the text, uh, started from text number 11 today, Balabalavatam uh, Chaham. So we discuss about karma, we discuss about the, the sex life, which is not contrary to religious principle, that is Krishna, the Grihastha Ashrama and the difference in Griha Medhi. And then we discuss about the different modes at how Krishna is, or different colors, example, how jivas are in working in different modes, but Krishna is superior to all. He doesn't get entangled in all. Therefore, janma karma chame divyam, everything is transcendental. It's not a product of the different modes. And actually from that verse itself, text number 13 is the, the next point, accept or reject. Head, in our head, H E A A is for accept or reject. Text 13 to 20 talk about this principle. Some people reject it. Text 15. They reject it. They do not, they're not interested. Dush Kritina. Kritina means expert in doing something. Dush, Dushasana, uh, Duryodhana, Durniti. Uh, so many examples are there, so many words. Uh, that do means bad. So they are expert in doing bad. Atheistic or playing with God or somehow not interested in God realization. Um, now it's a choice. They, we, we have a choice to accept Krishna's shelter or reject Krishna's shelter. If we accept, we discuss what will be the outcome when we'll be free from the Maya energy, when we'll be controlled personally by the Supreme Lord who is loving, caring. Uh, father. There is no question of uh, loss, fear, insecurity. All those things will be gone. Everything, impurities will be gone. Uh, all the fears will be gone. We discussed that also so many verses from Chitane Charitamrit and the four types of uh, Dushkritana. So we'll pause here and take some, maybe one or two comments or questions or additions here. Thank you for your wonderful association. Anyone has any comments, additions, questions? Next week, we'll discuss four classes of people who accept, right? So we discuss those who reject. So the A will continue. We'll talk about those who accept. Anyone has any additions, questions in today's discussion or any words or thoughts or corrections? Um, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, none of the pranam. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, <clears throat> very nice class, Mataji and Prabhuji. I, I just want to share this, that when one sincerely surrenders to the Lord, genuinely, it's like a, a burden comes off your shoulder when problem comes, when calamities hit you or anything. You, we are always, because of how we surren surrender, uh, you always feel there is someone looking over you. And when, in that attitude and that frame, you're able to handle whatever comes your way very easily. That's my contribution, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Prabhu. You just paraphrased that verse. Krishna tomarahana yadi bole ekubar. If one says, Krishna, I am yours, then... Maya Bandha Hoyta Krishna Tare Karita. Krishna will take care. Krishna will take care. We should have faith. Krishna will take care. And when he says it, he means it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Very nice. Anyone else has any other thoughts, additions, corrections, or anything struck you really? Puja Mataji, you want to share something you've been hearing so attentively? No, Prabhuji, thank you. Thank you for your association. Anyone wants to say anything which really struck them today before we wrap up for today? Sampada Mataji. Lakshya will tell one point. Lakshya, what inspired you today? What did you 
What's your take home message? Um, like that we shouldn't like think um that we are like the um the make like um we on God like we uh, like we on the maker kind of. We're not the maker doer. Very nice. Good, good. Very nice. Thank you again, everyone, for your wonderful association, for your attentive hearing and uh, discussion, reading, especially in this month of Damodar Kartik. Very, very transcendental. Uh, and that's what is said, recommended. So I hope uh, and uh, everyone is aware about the lamp offering process. So please do that. Uh, and uh, inspire others also, your friends, neighbors, well wishers in this month of Kartik so we can get extra mercy in this transcendental Damodar sale. <laughs> okay, so we'll pause here. Shri Bhagavad Gita Upanishad Ki Jai, Shri Damodar Mars Ki Jai, Shri Dupadi Ki Jai, Samaviti Kaur Bhagavad Ki Jai. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.